In the field of military aviation, stealth can be divided into visible light stealth, infrared stealth, sound wave stealth, and electromagnetic wave stealth. Among them, electromagnetic wave stealth is the most important, because modern air defense systems mainly rely on radar to detect and control the destruction of aircraft. There are various technical means to achieve electromagnetic wave stealth, such as aircraft shape, transmissive materials, absorbing coatings, active electromagnetic wave cancellation, and so on. Among them, the most important stealth method is the aircraft shape design, which can be said to account for 80% of the electromagnetic wave stealth effect. The world's first modern stealth aircraft was made by the Germans and Americans at the same time. At the end of World War II, Germany developed many imaginative military projects to reverse the situation. The Horton 229 fighter was one of them. This flying wing fighter looked very sci-fi. Due to the shortage of materials in the late war, this plane used a lot of wood carbon plywood as a material. Because of the shape of the flying wing and the large amount of non-metallic materials, this aircraft had a strong radar stealth effect, which surprised the Germans very much. But with the technology at that time, this aircraft could not perform normal flight control at all. So the project soon failed. On the other side of the ocean in America, the Northrop Corporation was also working on flying wing aircraft. In 1940, they tested the first small flying wing aircraft, the N-1M, and in 1941 they successfully tested the XB-35, which was the same size as the B-2. During the test phase, American air traffic controllers complained that the XB-35 would disappear on their radar. Northrop and the Germans had inadvertently created a stealth aircraft. But in that era, flying wing aircraft could not effectively solve the problem of stable flight. XB-35 soon retired and became a forgotten aircraft in history, like Horton, 229. In the 1950s, the United States and the Soviet Union entered a full-blown Cold War. The Americans urgently needed to understand the development of the Soviet Union's nuclear war capabilities. So President Eisenhower ordered the Central Intelligence Agency to be responsible for strategic intelligence against the Soviet Union. At that time, strategic reconnaissance aircraft had to do the job. The Central Intelligence Agency commissioned Lockheed to design a new reconnaissance aircraft. Lockheed's ingenious designer, Kelly Johnson, led his skunk factory team and developed the U-2 spy plane. U-2 can fly at an altitude of 21,000 meters, which is the highest flying aircraft at that time. American intelligence pointed out that Soviet radar could not detect such a high-flying aircraft. Under the guarantee of the Central Intelligence Agency, President Eisenhower approved the plan to use the photoplates for strategic reconnaissance against the Soviet Union. Uh, but what the Americans did not expect was that the Soviets would improve their radar and capture the U-2 figure and even shoot down a U-2 reconnaissance plane in 1960. The Soviets made the strongest diplomatic protest to America and President Eisenhower was furious. He ordered the CIA to solve the problem. Kelly Johnson and his team at the Skunk Works went back to work trying to solve the U-2 stealth problem. They did a lot of research and tried several methods, such as covering special shielding systems on the aircraft and developing the first generation of absorbing coatings. But experiments showed that these methods could not effectively make the U-2 invisible to Soviet radar. This made Lockheed's engineers realize that it was useless to patch up a U-2. They had to start from scratch. However, this was the first time humans had deliberately researched electromagnetic stealth and they left behind a lot of valuable experience. For example, they established the RCS concept, radar cross-section, confirmed that the radar reflectivity of an aircraft is measured by using the cross-sectional area of a metal sphere at an equivalent distance as a unit. For example, if the RCS of an aircraft is 10 square meters, it means that the radar reflectivity of this aircraft is equal to a metal ball with a cross-section of 10 square meters at the same distance. The smaller the RCS, the more stealthy that aircraft is. The CIA started their next-generation strategic reconnaissance aircraft research project very early. Scientists from Lincoln Laboratory joined in. Through various experiments, they found that aircraft shape is crucial for electromagnetic wave stealth. They found that the most stealthy aircraft shape is actually flying saucer. When the shape of an aircraft is this kind of disc shape, its conductive resistance is almost equal to air. 
which means it is completely electromagnetically invisible. By the way, Lockheed's Skunk Factory team is located in Nevada's famous Area 51, where America allegedly captured alien flying saucers. Some people say that flying saucers have been making frequent appearances at Area 51 since the late 1950s. Maybe it was just a skunk factory trying to develop a disc-shaped aircraft for flight experiments. Of course, flying saucers could also be alien spacecraft. After all, aliens may also hope that their spacecraft can be electromagnetically invisible. But to this day, humans cannot make a useful flying saucer. American engineers found out that they could not make flying saucers, so they settled for the second best. Since the most dangerous moment for an aircraft is when it is flying toward enemy radar, why not make the front projection of the aircraft as close to a disc shape as possible? This is called front hemisphere stealth. This concept has been extended to this day due to cost and technical considerations. Like F-35, these stealth fighters are all front hemisphere stealth aircraft, Following this idea, the Skunk Factory designed a new reconnaissance aircraft, AA-12, nicknamed the Oxcart. A-12 is also the fastest aircraft ever made by man. This aircraft was later developed by the U.S. Air Force into a strategic reconnaissance aircraft, which is the famous SR-71 Blackbird. Everyone focuses on Blackbird's high altitude and high-speed performance, but few people know that Blackbird is the world's first intentionally designed stealth aircraft. A 12 Oxcarts RCS is said to be between 5, 10 square meters, which is not very low, but due to the technical level at that time, coupled with the fact that in addition to stealth, A-12 also attaches great importance to high speed and high altitude performance, such as titanium alloy fuselage. These designs seriously affect the stealth, so this result is not bad. Although the A-12 used a stealth design in its shape design, all the American designs were based on a large number of experiments. They knew that stealth and shape had a lot to do with each other, but they were not clear about the theoretical relationship, and it was the Soviets who came up with the theory. In 1962, the Soviet scientist Pyotr Ufimtsev developed and perfected the theoretical relationship between the shape of an object and the reflection of electromagnetic waves based on some basic concepts proposed by Western scientists and explained it in mathematical language. This scientist did not realize the great military value of his work, and this scientist was also likely to need to publish papers to obtain a higher status in the Soviet Academy system. He decided to publish his research results, and the Communist Party secretaries and political commissars who were responsible for reviewing the papers could not understand this article full of mathematical formulas and approved the publication. When Lockheed engineers saw this paper they immediately realized that they had found the key to stealth aircraft. It was the 1970s, and American computer technology had made great strides. Lockheed developed the Echo One software specifically for designing stealth aircraft. When they received the Soviet's theory, they immediately integrated the theory into the software, combined it with their years of data accumulation, and finally designed a real stealth aircraft according to physical principles. The F-117 stealth bomber was born. Although computer power at the time could only simplify curved surfaces to polygons, the F-117 was indeed a groundbreaking aircraft. It is said that the RCS reached an unprecedented 0.003 square meters, which is similar to a hummingbird. Of course, the real RCS is still a secret. It cannot be denied that the F-117 is indeed a true stealth fighter. It laid the foundation for later stealth aircraft design. F-117 showed its advantage for the first time in the Panama War and showed its power in the First Gulf War. It was unprecedented for a while, but in 1999, an F-117 was shot down by an old SA-3 missile from the Serbian army. The reasons for the shootdown are many. Some people say that Russians and Chinese have developed new radars that can lock F-117, some people say that Serbian army set a trap and deliberately leaked high-value targets waiting for F-117 to come. When F-117 opened the bomb bay ready to drop bombs, this is F-117's only moment exposed in the night sky, the Serbian army suddenly turned on fire control radar, locked Nighthawk and shot it down. Some people say this is just a coincidence of... Anyway, being shot down... 
The wreckage exposed many secrets of F-117. Coupled with F-117's poor flight performance and high maintenance cost, the U.S. military's strategic goals were also adjusted to anti-terrorism operations at that time. In order to reduce expenses, the U.S. military retired all F-117 fighters in 2007. However, these F-117S are sealed in constant temperature hangars and can be recalled at any time. In 1997, Northrop Corporation's years of hard work paid off, and America was equipped with the first B-2 stealth bomber. This flying wing bomber, with a shape closest to a flying saucer, is still the most stealthy aircraft to date. On January 14, 2003, the first F-22 fighter was delivered to the U.S. Air Force, ushering in the era of stealth fighters dominating the skies. The Lockheed Martin Group drew on decades of experience in developing stealth fighters to develop this powerful fighter. The F-22 fighter has performed well in various confrontational exercises in NATO. It achieved a zero, 144 exchange ratio in the red flag military exercises, the main reason for this is its powerful stealth capability. On December 15, 2006, the first F-35. A fighter entered the U.S. Air Force sequence. America fully entered the stealth fighter era. F-35 is different from B-2, F-22 and other omnidirectional stealth fighters. It is a front hemisphere stealth fighter, but it still has powerful stealth function. It also easily defeated various fourth generation fighters in NATO military exercises through the development of these stealth fighters above. America also established four rules of stealth fighter shape design. Rule 1. The external contour of the fighter plane presents continuous smooth curves. F-22 cancels all external mounts for this purpose. Missiles are collected in the belly. The cockpit cover is covered with metal foil. And conductivity with the fuselage is integrated. Not only that, all non-moving interfaces on F-22 are covered with special putty. Even a large number of inspection windows are like this. So much so that every time after inspection, putty must be repaired again, which is time-consuming and expensive, until the F-35 era developed a new composite interface to solve this problem. Rule 2. All external edge lines of the fighter plane must achieve parallel lines. The angle of parallel lines is specially calculated. This practice is to let electromagnetic waves go from body to edge, scatter in a certain direction. Rule 3. All openings that cannot be sealed such as landing gear bay, missile bay, etc., must be made into sawtooth shape, and sawtooth line segments must also reach parallel lines. This practice is to allow electromagnetic waves to reflect back and forth, cancel each other out, and decay. Rule 4. All moving parts must be hidden and cannot be directly irradiated by radar. This applies mainly to engine blades. The F-22 uses an S-shaped air duct to hide the rotating blades of the engine. This design will affect the efficiency of the engine... So on the one hand, it must be very sophisticated. On the other hand, the engine must also be powerful enough. Loss of power will not affect the flight design standards of the aircraft. Here I have to talk about the Su-57 stealth fighter designed by Russia. Its engine can be seen from the front air intake, which shows that the Russians have not solved the problem of power loss caused by air duct, and also shows that the Russian engine power is not powerful enough there is not enough margin for stealth to sacrifice power. China's J-20 engine is hidden, but the J-20 fuselage is particularly long, in addition to factors such as the bomb bay and oil tank. To make air duct hide the engine and make S-bend relatively gentle, it's not unrelated. These four rules of stealth are also the rules that other stealth aircraft shape designs follow, including the Russian Su-57, but China's J-20 is a different kind. Here... I will focus on the appearance and talk about whether J-20 is a stealth fighter or not. It is widely known in the industry that the canard wing layout is not suitable for stealth aircraft, and the reason lies in those small canard wings. From the introduction above, we know that the shape of stealth aircraft should form continuous smooth curves as much as possible, and these canard wings just break the continuous curves of the aircraft shape. And what's more... The J-20's canard wings are moving aerodynamic surfaces. As we all know, modern fighters are all statically unstable designs. Static instability means that the aerodynamic center of the aircraft is in front of the aircraft's center of gravity, and the aircraft will quickly change its flight attitude when it is slightly disturbed by airflow in the air. Modern commercial and transport aircraft are all statically stable designs. When they encounter turbulence in the air, they do not easily lose control. 
but fighter jets strive for agility. After the development of computer technology in the 1970s, the flight control system can help pilots control the aircraft, so all new fighters are designed to be statically unstable to achieve high agility. Of course, this also means that the aircraft's aerodynamic surfaces are constantly moving under the control of the computer, adjusting the aircraft's flight attitude. When encountering a larger airflow or a larger movement of the aircraft, this movement will be very obvious. The F-22 and other conventional layout stealth fighters have little effect on front hemisphere stealth because their aerodynamic surfaces are hidden behind the main wing and fuselage, while the J-20's front canard wings will destroy the stealth shape of the aircraft as soon as they move. Although the J-20 may have used translucent materials to make the canards, these canards are really big. For a fifth-generation stealth fighter that is very sensitive to a small antenna or even a rivet, these canard wings are a big failure to destroy stealth. So is the J-20. A qualified stealth fighter? Perhaps only when it goes to war can we get an answer. This is the History and Weapons Channel. Please subscribe to this channel. Your support is invaluable to me.